And what is up guys, Technicals here. Just wanted to throw this together very quickly because I've seen a lot of people, uh, many people commenting uh, about KSO Ultras being bricked, uh, that the overclocking is dangerous. Obviously there's a risk in doing it. I mentioned that in my overclock video, you know, you could brick your device, you certainly uh, void your warranty. Uh, but some other people having some issues and a lot of people sort of not wanting to get into it additionally and many other people still saying uh, that it makes more sense to buy another kso ultra than it does to overclock so i want to address those couple things uh, not gonna roll the intro all right we got the intro out of the way so anyway hobbyist miner popular mining youtuber i'm sure if you're watching me you are subscribed to him or are familiar with him uh, he did a live stream where he was overclocking his device uh, it seems like it was a bad firmware update. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything with the cooling, although I scrubbed through the stream and I didn't see that he had done the, uh, the interior cooling modifications. He may have done that in another video, I don't know. Uh, but I did notice that when he was doing the overclocks, he just had a fan pointed at it. He wasn't doing direct air forced in through a shroud or anything like that, like a 120 millimeter fan. Uh, but it doesn't seem like the problem was heat related, but I did notice that nonetheless. Perhaps he's already remarked on that. Uh, but I did notice it. So uh, he emphatically in his stream saying it's, uh, it does not recommend doing this, uh, you know, because he bricked his. Now they can, if you do brick your device or, you know, seize it up in some way, they can remote into it and repair it. Uh, T-Swift, the person who puts out the firmware, uh, they do that. They charge a fee for it, uh, but they, the option is there. So the device isn't completely bricked. I understand his concern about not wanting to let someone remote in, but... You know, you can do it through a virtual machine or something like that. You know, the, the option is there if you want to do it. I mean, if you're hyper concerned about it, I, under, I understand. But uh, the options do exist. If you mess up somewhere along the way or you have an issue, it can be repaired. Additionally, in my conversations with T-Swift, I asked him about the sampling of people who have had issues with the overclocking, who have seized it up. And universally, everyone that he's spoken to or had come forward with an issue seems like they were doing something incorrect throughout the overclocking process, insufficient cooling, not uploading the initialization file in some way, using the button, whatever. Um, it seems like complete user error uh, as far, again, according to him, me asking him, because I'm seeing these issues pop up. I did a video on it. Certainly don't want you know people to have issues if there is some major fundamental underlying issue. Uh, but as he explains it, the, uh, the encryption to get into this device to make the overclocking firmware was much different this time, and it required sort of a heavier handed approach, which required more complex steps in the overclocking process itself. So that leaves more vulnerability, more you know possibility of causing an issue along the way. So uh, I don't know that I have seen any evidence of anyone absolutely positively bricking, bricking a device thus far, uh, something that's beyond repair, uh, but there is a risk associated with it. I did want to show this though, as uh, just my anecdotal information, I have not turned off the device since I did the overclocking video and that's sick. It just rolled past six days uh, flat. So six days that I've been on the, uh, I forget, I forget which firmware I actually used, but over 600, uh, about 620 something giga hash on the KSO Ultra. It's been steady mobbing, very stable all the way through, and I'm gonna use this data to prove my point once again for all you doubters out there that it does make sense to overclock versus just buying another device. So again, this is not interesting to look at, but I did take the data that I have for the past six days over from F2 pool. I know, don't mine on F2 pool, whatever. I mine on F2 pool, I like it. So again, this is very back of the envelope, but I believe it absolutely sort of encompasses any big variable that could sort of you know, tip the point back and forth on someone making a decision as to whether to overclock or just buy another device. If you just want to run a stock device and do that, and this miner is not expensive. It's like three, $400. It's not an expensive miner. So if you want to run a stock, go ahead. But for me, because it's low priced, it makes sense to just squeeze every little bit of juice I can out of it. Over the past six days, averaging at that 620, almost 630 giga hash, uh, we take a look here. Again, this very back of the envelope, but the modded version, I was able to take in 64.89 CASPA. So I took my average hash rate and divided it by 400 or 400 into it to derive what a stock KSO Ultra would have gotten in the same circumstance. And so that derives out to 41.45. If you know a better way to calculate that, let me know. But it's a percentage of the hash rate. My hash rate's pretty stable. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that it would have taken in 41.45 CASPA 
you know, everything being equal. So over these past six days, that's $11.66 based on cash of spot price right now. Stock unit would have taken in $7.45. The cost to run it, $2.40 for me. Buck nine for a stock unit. Profit nine twenty five dollars for me. Profit six thirty six dollars for the stock unit. But again, like I said in my videos, it's not about the efficiency of the device when it comes to CASPA because of the emission schedule. So if you go based on the emission schedule here, we have a ne the next reduction coming up on or about the 8th of, uh, of well, what month is next? August. So in those six days, if I extrapolate it out, that's 15 more days to go as of right now. Today's the 24th. And so if I stay, everything being being the same, no difficulty increases, no kind of wacky things going on, I would be able to take in 103 CASPA, extra CASPA over a stock unit. And so if you are mining CASPA and holding on to CASPA, then I think it makes even more sense because you're holding on to it with the hopes that it's going to go up in price. And so that 100 CASPA, if CASPA goes to a dollar, this extra 15 days is 100 extra dollars. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Obviously, a lot of people are stuck in the efficiency mode, and I know why, because power is expensive and everything else is operating on efficiencies. But again, the emission schedule of CASPA, I think makes sense to get hit it hard, hit it fast, get as much as you can while you can. So if you got a KSO Ultra, you've overclocked it, maybe you're not, love to know what you're thinking in the comments below, because it's been about a week now since the overclocking firmware has been out. Plenty of time for other people to get data. Let me know what you're doing in the comments below. Be sure to like this video, because that's just the nice thing to do. Be a nice person, like the video. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.